And this is a Scar Watcher uh, ATED Pro series. And this focuser of it was uh, sliding too much. As you can see, I've loosened it now. So I removed the rings and I removed the uh, Vixen bar, dovetail bar. And now I'm trying to remove one by one all the screws, as you can see here. And I will show you what I'm going to do. This part can be a scene that you have just contact with this uh, roller here at this point and at this point. So I will just try to uh, use a abrasive tool and uh, just make it smooth so all of this will be engaging in the friction holding this. And now I've removed all the three screws. One is screw has remained and one Allen key. So I remove these ones also now. Okay, I've removed all the four uh, screws. This Allen key doesn't, Allen the screw doesn't hold anything which is related to this. Just hold this piece of the uh, Teflon. So this is the part that causes friction. I will put it back when I have done with it. Don't want to remove it. This focuser tube now comes out. And as you can see, is this. Uh, I removed the optical tube assembly and covered it with something so if you not get collecting dust. Okay, now I've put the focuser apart. Uh, this is the tube. As you can see inside is com completely blackened. I can even remove this part and put this inside the vise. And then with the uh, tool I will just flatten this more slightly. This purpose, because I'm working on, in home, in living room, and I don't have a shop here, workshop. So I put the use a tray, and I'll put the vice inside here, and we go ahead with the. This is the unboxing of a drill press vice. I got it, it's a Magnuson one. I bought it from the screw fix for nineteen pound ninety five pence. It's very good. Uh, I already tried it. I wanted something heavy that don't need to be attached to anything because I'm working obviously in the table in the living room. So I don't have much chance to actually attach it to a table here permanently. So something heavy that can uh, hold things on its own is what I wanted. The weight of it is, uh, if I can find here, is made in China. The weight of it is... Uh, hmm. I think it's it's around four kilos, four to five kilos. Yeah, and uh, let me open it now. This is the part that we have to take out. Okay. And as you can see, this is a quite heavy object. Oops, very heavy. So be careful when you're using this. This is the wise. Oh, this, I like this handle, it can be maneuvered around. And uh, yes, let's put it here. And yeah, that works nice. Now, uh, I can open it and close it as I want, and it's hopefully in that tray will be really good. I'll put it in the tray. As you see, it's really heavy, but what I will do is remove this, uh, put it aside, because that's the sliding on the surface of the wood. Put aside the tablecloth. This is wooden surface. I'll put this uh, non-slipping tray, which has a good grip, as you can see. And I put the object that I want to do some work on it. This is this uh, focuser tube of a Skywatcher telescope, EDAT Pro series, this upper chromatic telescope. So I put it here. I try to use a little bit of tissue here so it will not leave any mark on this to make it work workable easy. Okay, as you can see, I put the tissues here so it will not. Uh, uh, damage the surface of the tube and I will gently now tighten it up. I don't want to really make it too tight I just gently do this 
and we'll show you the result. I may remove this part also first. Okay, I've now tightened this up. It doesn't move. And I will try to remove it. Probably I will not try to remove this even. I'll leave it there. But I will bring now my tool to actually do some work on this surface to make it smoother. At the moment, it just you can see this side, this side engages. The middle part doesn't engage. So practically means it is like a meniscus. It's like a valley dipping. It's a cavity there. So I want to make it flat. So that bar of the rolling bar of the, the wheel will actually get engaged with this. So let me do that. For abrasion, I'm using the King Waterstone, uh, which is a very good quality Japanese uh, stone. I gently uh, probably make it a little bit uh, moist, then I will try to rub it against here in a way that I keep a, a flat surface. I should not really go like this or like this to give a, min a shape of the convex shape. It's very cool. I want to make it completely flat. So I have to be very careful with this. To make this wet, I just use a little bit of this water and I'll put it on this. So I'll work with it now. Okay, as you can see here, I'm using this side of the thing. Uh, this water stone because it's rougher and the edge of this uh, uh, flat area is gradually expanding toward the center so when they're reaching the center that means it is done so I move it all the way here and uh, that way I will have a good surface for grip of the wheel of the focuser I will continue until it is done okay when you are doing this you have to be very careful the thickness of the uh, area that you are doing will vary gradually as you move along the length. So this area is a little bit wider, abrasion was a little bit higher, and here sanding was a little bit uh, smaller amount of the material was removed. It was ideal if I could have a mill and just mill this part, but I don't have or any other tool like planner. But with this one, I can do it. I have to just be watching that I get a uniform line. This line has a different thickness here, these two lines. And I have to make sure that the middle part is equal in all things. And for that, I have to make sure this is wet, first of all, and this surface is wet. I just drop my, with my finger. I'll put a few drops here. And I'll try to hold this with one hand and make sure that my... Uh, water stone is always horizontal to this surface so uniformly I will uh, you know remove the material from this and it's not much I can just do it gradually okay I think I have now a good grip surface for the I don't want to continue to the middle and uh, that is a risk I'm not going to take for non-uniformity. This middle same part has got a little bit more abrasion because when I'm using this tool, this water stone, from this side, the middle part gets also some abrasion. From this side also gets some material removed. So the center is a little bit more uh, uh, lost material here. But I feel that is surface that I like to have. I will try it if it works and can hold the eyepiece and moves smoothly. What's wrong with that? That's good. I will go with this. Now I have removed the focuser from the vise and I'm going to put this aside and assemble the focuser system again. Okay, before that I make sure that it's clean. I use a kitchen towel or any tissue or any rag that you have. A little bit wet and just uh, wipe this up. So make sure that it's clean. As you can see I put the um, tablecloth back. This is my focuser wheel. This is my uh, adjusting uh, uh, holder of this focuser wheel. If we go like this. And these are the screws that I will use and this is the rest of the attachments. I will attach them first this one and then that one there. Let's do it. Okay, all these uh, two parts are attached now. What is remaining? I'll bring the optical tube assembly and uh, attach these two. I have now the optical tube assembly here. This part goes inside and I will put them one by one in. Uh, the tube just slides in. And now I'm going to put uh, 
the wheel, the focuser wheel, and then the other parts. I will show you. Okay, I put the focuser wheel, and uh, now I'm going to attach the screws. This is not attached at the moment; it just hold by the weight of this. Okay, I have now put the screws, but I have to tighten them. You have to make sure the center of this is at the center of this part, the tube. So these two should be center to center. So I can adjust it slightly, bring this that way, so it will be centered. Okay, now everything is attached. Yeah, that's good friction. I can see the good friction. Let me just put it on the tube. Uh, I'll put the rings on and then attach it to a mount. Okay, now the telescope optical tube assembly is inside the cradle of rings and one by one I can tighten them up. I will go ahead and do this. Okay, now I've tightened the rings and now I will bring the mount, it's a Dobsonian mount for the Skywatcher Heritage Virtuoso. I've uh, installed the mount, the optical tube assembly with the Vixen dovetail and everything else is installed. As you can see, it's quite nice and easy to move the tube. You can hear the friction. In the past, and I can show you, in the past it was easy to move it by this, now you cannot move it. It's rock solid. Uh, what I will do now, I install the diagonal. The telescope focuser is really nice and smooth. In the past it was slippery, I could not really move it. Uh, I could not use eyepieces on this very good because it was just all the time slipping over. Now it's very smooth and has a good grip. It's holding all the weight of this uh, diagonals and the adapters. Now I install a 25 millimeter mid uh, puzzle eyepiece here and as you will see the result. Okay this 25 millimeter puzzle is installed and I'll push this back and forward it goes all the way no problem at all of course the length of this is now increased so the balance is now uh, gone off balance so I'm just pulling it back so the telescope will be in balance again. I tighten up the Dobsonian mount also. Let's look at something now just for the end. Good end. The foot at one of these trees and we look at the eyepiece now through the mid eyepiece. I need a third finger to tap on the center of the image to bring it to focus. But as you can see, uh, it's relatively in focus on the foot. I must say it really stays in the focus uh, when I'm watching with the eye, normal eye. This holding the camera is a little bit dodgy. So it's not easy as it looks. <laughs> Try it, you will see what I mean. But anyway, you saw something. And uh, image quality is very good. Focus stays in focus. Camera could not focus because it doesn't like to focus on one object. It wants to focus on the whole scene. And it cannot do what I want at the moment. I wish I had the third hand. I'm going to use now one of my relatively heavier pieces. This is a APM 
HTC 13 millimeter 100 degrees IPS. It's a two inch one at this uh, with this adapter that it has. So I have to remove this uh, um, two inch adapter to one and put the IPS here. At the moment, it's holding really well. Okay, now we have a good focus. I can let me try. Can I move it smoothly? Oh, it does move without any problem. The focusing wheel really works. Look at this. Oh, in the past, I couldn't really do this. <laughs> oh, look, it works. So the remedy that I did is working. So let us go and see through this one. Let's look through this like this. Now we are looking through the 100 millimeter eyepiece. So 100 degree eyepiece, 13 millimeter focal length. The whole field of view is what you see, is really nice for the eye. And you can see all the details hopefully on the fruits. The shaking with you were seeing is because of my hand probably, or my heartbeat actually. I'm alive, thanks God. So I have a heartbeat. Let me try to move the focus a little bit. Okay, I'm going to focus on the leaves, on the background. And I'm going back to the fruit. I'm going auto focus all, all of that. And I'm going again into focus. No problem at all. So my remedy worked. The focus wheel is actually accurate and it stays where it should be. Uh, it saved me 100 pounds for buying a dual focuser practically by just using this simple remedy. I used the tool, 19, 20 pound it cost me, and stone, which was around uh, uh, 20 pound, about it. But uh, 40 pounds saved me 60 pound. I can use those tools for any other thing I want.